Hi everybody. I've been making sugar cookies for the past five years. I use an icing technique that does not involve pastry bags, and I decorate the cookies with sprinkles and paint them with thinned food coloring. It's a lot like watercolor. I've linked to my cookie and icing recipes below. They're from Martha Stewart, and today I have five different animal cookies and some royal icing. It makes sense to ice all of the white areas first. I sort of slop it on with a little knife or a spoon, and then I use the end of a paintbrush to move icing to the edges. I have a cup of water off screen that I use to rinse off the brush. Sometimes you have to get creative with the sprinkles. To make the cat's nose, I snapped two petals off a flower sprinkle. One Christmas, I discovered that I had left all of my traditional holiday cookie cutters at work. My students were using them for a project, and I didn't want to go back and get them. So I decided to make it an animal-themed Christmas, and I iced my animals as usual, and to make them Christmassy, I just put wreaths around their necks. I use Wilton Gel food coloring, and as you can see, I put the icing in little bowls and add dabs of food coloring to the rims, mixing in a speck at a time. A little goes a long way. Now when I was in kindergarten, one time we took a test where we had to follow directions. One of the items was a pig, and we were told to color it pink. I knew that actual pigs were more of a peach color, so I colored mine peach, and that was incorrect, and I was so sad about how unfair that was. So I always add a bit of copper food coloring to the pink to tone it down a bit and to honor that lousy day in kindergarten. If you make animal cookies a lot, and you want them to look realistic, get ready to use lots of brown and muted colors. I always run out of brown first. This donkey is just a dab of brown with a lot of icing. And after I ice him, I will add some eyebrows and a nose using little chocolate sprinkles and tweezers. And my hand will be completely in the way. Sorry about that. I'm swirling on the cat's fur with two different browns, one with a little more food coloring than the other. As you can see, I'm just slopping it on. Then I'm straightening it up and creating a marbled effect with the end of the paintbrush. Don't overwork this or that swirly effect will disappear. Brown plus a little blue creates a cooler brown. You can add any color to brown to create a range of earth tones. And this earth tone is going on the turkey.
I'm adding black to this brown icing. I'm only going to need a small amount, so I'm just mixing it on the side of the bowl. You can swirl the border between the colors while they're still wet for a marbled or feathery look. Next I'm going to mix a tiny amount of red and yellow icing. Assembly line is nice when you can swing it. I normally do not ice five different cookies consecutively like this. I try to work assembly line style, icing all the pigs before moving on to all the donkeys, for example. If you're buying sprinkles and like animal cookies, look for chocolate sprinkles that resemble little logs, pearl-like candies, and flat circles. And I seem to have no end of this green and red wreath stuff. Dinosaur colors can be whatever you like. I generally save them for last and combine remnants of other colors. To get oddball muted colors like this, try mixing three or more colors together, combining warms with cools. This dinosaur is a mixture of blue, brown, yellow, and even pink. The consistency of my icing is thin, but not so thin that it runs off the cookies. It also shouldn't be too thick. It should be more like ketchup and less like toothpaste. When you're finished with the royal icing, give your cookies time to air dry. This usually takes at least a few hours. Keep checking on them until they look less glossy and feel solid. They won't get stale. In fact, I think these taste better the day after you ice them. And this is how I paint them, watercolor style. I put a tiny amount of food coloring in its lid or in a small dish and add a few drops of water. More water makes a lighter paint and less water makes it darker. Don't paint with straight food coloring though. It's too sticky, it never really dries, and it stains mouths. I'm using a small, round watercolor brush. Use whatever shape and size you like. I kind of like this cat the way it is, but you can add legs, stripes, and other details on top of that swirly brown. You could do this with other colors too, such as black. You can even mix colors together as you would with paint, but I'm trying to race through these. I've sped up this video, and even though I was rushing, each cookie here took about six minutes to decorate from start to finish, not counting drying time. So be prepared to spend an entire afternoon fussing over even half a batch of these cookies. I could have left this donkey alone, but I wanted to show that a furry texture is possible if you do a lot of little brush strokes. Just paint them in the direction the hair would grow. I like how the paintbrush can create features like feet. 
Before I figured out how to paint with food coloring, I would have used tweezers to place sprinkles in the icing to create things like this. Sometimes the food coloring isn't dark enough, like on the beak here, you can always go over it again. I'm using a combination of blue and brown for the dinosaur's spots, and I'm trying to do a variety of shapes and sizes here. I love how the addition of just a single dot on one of these eyes brings the cookie to life. My sister likes these donkey cookies. The little blanket can be decorated with fringe and designs, and then she and I enjoy adding words. And you can see that this little guy is a wise ass. Later that day, I also made a smart ass and also a weird ass. Once you're finished, it's super important to line them up in a cute way and take a picture before everyone eats them. Happy holidays and thanks for watching.